I believe following portfolios of well-known investors is one of the best ways to learn about investing. It's probably the simplest way to improve your own investing skills and knowledge, whether you're just starting out on your investing journey or have been investing for decades. Charlie Munger is an investor whose portfolio I closely follow. So when I saw the headline that Munger had sold shares in Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce company, I was intrigued. This news surprised me because Charlie Munger and his business partner Warren Buffett are known as the ultimate buy and hold long-term investors. So the million dollar question is, why is Munger selling Alibaba stock less than a year after he purchased it? In this video, we'll look at that question and see what lessons you can take away and apply to your own investing process. But first, please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, as we definitely appreciate each and every one of you. Alibaba was the portfolio's first new stock in at least nearly a decade, and to say it was a contentious investment would be an understatement. I've probably studied every investment Charlie Munger has made in his career, both his own and those made through his leadership position at Berkshire Hathaway, and I don't believe any investment in Munger's entire career has elicited such a strong reaction as his investment in Alibaba. Munger was defending his Alibaba investment just a month ago. Coming up is what Munger had to say about this. Munger believes that China is currently uninvestable. He's never made a long or short investment in China. Why is this the case? He's skeptical of the data, he no longer believes in the relationship between the United States and China, and he believes that there is a risk that investments in China will be confiscated. Only the future will tell who's correct. But China is a large modern nation. It has a large population, and a lot of it has been modernized in the last 30 years. He mentioned, we invested some money in China because we could get more value in terms of enterprise strength and security price than we could in the United States. Others, including Sequoia Capital, the nation's leading venture capital firm, have made the same decision we have. Why would anyone as astute as Buffett or Munger consider investing in China or any of its companies? This is due to Munger's greater strength per dollar invested in China. They invest in companies that are stronger than their competitors and are priced lower. That explains why they're in China. Given the fortune Berkshire made on their BYD suggestion, why doesn't Buffett invest in Alibaba? Warren, like many other intelligent people, prefers to invest in areas where he feels at ease, Munger says. For some reason, Munger is more at ease with the Chinese than Buffett is. He doesn't believe Alibaba is as entrenched as Apple or Alphabet, and believes the internet will be a very competitive place even if you're a large internet retailer. Based on everything he's read and researched, he believes it's important to acknowledge that those who criticized the investment in Alibaba had valid reasons. I've found three primary reasons why people are bearish on Alibaba. But first, please like and subscribe to our channel. Now let's return to the video. The first reason I'd mention is government policy. Companies exist in most countries for one reason, to make the owners of the company as much money as possible. It's literally written into the law of the United States that CEOs and the management of a publicly traded company have a fiduciary duty to the company's shareholders to maximize the value of each shares of stock. In China, this is not the case. When it comes to business operations in China, the Chinese government plays a much larger role. The government can decide to limit the profitability of specific companies or industries at any time. For-profit tutoring companies were one of the hottest investments in China. Investors in these firms saw a massive market of millions of customers eager to use these services. However, the Chinese government prohibited these businesses from making a profit, effectively converting them into non-profit organizations. As you can imagine, this news caused the stocks of those companies to plummet. This brings me to the second reason why investors have been wary of China. Luckin Coffee is an example of this. Luckin Coffee is a Chinese coffee company and coffee house chain that was founded in June 2017 in China. Luckin established itself as a local competitor to Starbucks opening thousands of locations in its first two years of operation. The stock was well-liked by investors and reached a high of more than $50 per share in January 2020. However, it was discovered that the company's numbers were fraudulent, and as a result, the stock plummeted, and within a few months, it was trading at around $1. To settle its accounting fraud charges, Luckin Coffee agreed to pay a $180 million penalty. To invest in a company, you must first analyze its numbers, and you must trust that those numbers are accurate. Concerns about the accuracy of numbers reported by Chinese companies are a major reason why some prominent investors have labeled the country uninvestable. The third reason investors are hesitant to invest in Alibaba applies not only to Alibaba, but to many other Chinese stocks purchased by non-Chinese investors. For example, when an American investor purchases Alibaba stock, they're not purchasing stock in the company. It gets a little complicated, but bear with me as I explain. As previously discussed, 
Certain Chinese industries are heavily regulated. Limits on how much of a company can be owned by foreign investors are among the restrictions on these industries. Chinese companies such as Alibaba and Baidu list their stocks in the United States in order to gain access to the massive U.S. capital markets. To circumvent foreign ownership restrictions, the companies establish intermediate companies registered outside of China. Variable interest entities, or VIEs for short, are the name given to these intermediary companies. All of these risks existed when Munger first invested in Alibaba, and I'm confident that he was very well aware of them. However, it's interesting that he has chosen to sell such a large portion of his holding in Alibaba after only purchasing it around a year ago, especially given Munger's buy-and-hold long-term investing style. Based on my research of Charlie and Warren, I've identified three reasons why a stock should be sold. Let's go over this list of reasons and compare it to the current situation with Alibaba. This list will be useful to you in your own investing because knowing when to sell a stock is arguably one of the most difficult aspects of investing. The first reason Buffett or Munger would sell a stock is if they need the funds to purchase something else. Remember that this Alibaba position was not part of Munger's personal portfolio. Instead, it was in his portfolio for the Daily Journal Corporation, which he manages. The Daily Journal is a newspaper publisher that also creates legal software. It's possible then that the company required some cash to fund its operations. However, this seems unlikely given that Alibaba was the only position sold down. The next reason that both Buffett and Munger have mentioned selling a stock in the past is if the stock becomes too large of a percentage of the overall portfolio. However, given that Munger appears to be much more at ease with a concentrated portfolio than Buffett, I don't believe this one applies to Munger selling Alibaba stock. In terms of Munger's personal stock portfolio, he stated in interviews that the vast majority of his wealth is concentrated in two companies, Berkshire Hathaway and Costco. The third reason Munger could have sold is that the business's underlying fundamentals have changed. According to my research on Munger and Buffett, this is the most common reason they sell stocks. If the underlying fundamentals of the business have deteriorated, it may be a good time to sell and invest the proceeds in a better business. This is most likely what happened with Munger and his Alibaba investment. If Charlie Munger's opinion of Alibaba's underlying long-term fundamentals changes, I wouldn't be surprised if he sells the stock. I believe that these three reasons are the main reasons from Charlie Munger to sell a stock and they're all important lessons that you can apply in your own investing. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And also, please do hit that bell notification as well to get notified of future videos from our channel. And as always, feel free to have a discussion in the comment section down below if you want to talk more about what Charlie Munger has been doing. See you in the next video.